Hello everyone, so this um, video will take, um, just go through the um, command that can be used to monitor a user's job on the high performance computer cluster. And so on this cluster here that I'm using, we use the PBS queuing system. And so the command to monitor a user's job is called QStat, which gives the status of the queue for a user. So QStat, and then I'm going to use the minus little u flag to only um, show the jobs for a particular user, which is me. And so just a little note on this depends on the cluster or the HPC you're using. On some HPCs, QStat will only show a user's job. On others, it might show all the jobs within a project. Or on other systems, you will see every single user's job that is currently having something in the queue. Um, so you will have to have a look how QStat behaves on the cluster you're using but so not to show any of the jobs from other users at the moment I'm making sure that this QStat command will only show my own jobs and so by using the minus little u flag I ensure that only my own jobs will be shown but the cluster you're using might do that by default with a QStat command. Okay so we've got QStat and then print out the jobs for only print out my jobs for a particular user and let's see what it shows. Okay, so there seem to be two jobs at the moment that the queue is finding under my username and so we quickly go through what all of these mean. So the front here gives the ID of the job and so it's usually a number and some um, on some clusters you will also find the queue manager which is flash manager 2. Then the username is the next column and then you will it will show what queue it is in. So there's two different queues one is general one is multiple and so depending on the HPC you're using you might only have one queue or you might have different queues that are shown there. Um, the next one will show the job name and that is a user defined um, name that is given when the job is submitted and so if you do um, submit your jobs and you submit a lot of them it's advisable that you choose some distinguishable names because if you are plotting out a hundred jobs or more it'll be easier to find the one you're looking for basically. The session ID here is a system thing, it's not really important for the users. The next column gives the number of compute nodes that are in use by that job. So in the first one it's one node and the second job is running across two compute nodes. This note column here gives the number of tasks which corresponds in this case to the number of calls that have been requested and so the first one is 12 and the second one is requested to use 48 cores. Here we then have the requested memory that the user has requested for the job and here we have the requested wall time in hours um, for the job. This one the status column is an important one it will show a capital R like these two here when the job is actually running. The other option is a Q, a capital Q, and that means that the job is still queued and hasn't started running yet. Another option which isn't shown here is a capital H, and so this is when a job is put on hold. So unless as a user you put the hold on yourself and you see a job that has been put on hold, it might be advisable to contact 
um, your help desk to find out why your job has been put on hold. And so the last column here is the elapsed time. So this job has requested 168 hours of wall time and about two and a half of that have been it has been running for about two and a half hours of that and the same here 10 and that's two hours and 18 minutes okay so that's the standard qstat output um, that actually corresponds to the qstat minus q uq and hank to the minus a output um, in some clusters you will have to give the minus a option to to get this this type of output the standard qstat output is usually a bit shorter with less columns um, the minus a which is all um, output is a bit more informative we can now add other options to that qstat command for example we can do the qstat keep the minus a but then put a minus a, a w behind that which is a wider output than the one that is shown at the moment you can see that the width has increased significantly um, what that's been helping with is that we can now see the full job id with the full name of the queue manager sometimes when the job names have been uh, very long this will be an opportunity or the this output will then show the longer job name as well and the other change is here that the elapsed time is now shown in hours minutes and seconds basically so there's many different options for the qstat command <clears throat> one interesting option is the minus capital T and I'm not using it here because these two jobs are already running um, so that will show an approximate start time for the job so it will replace the elapsed time for queued jobs with an approximate time or date when the job might start if you use the minus capital T option another option is the minus little t and that is um, important for array jobs now if you have an array job only the master job or the parent job will be shown in the standard qstat output if you add the minus little t option to that all the different array tasks will also be shown and I should note that for array jobs you might see another status and that is a capital B status and that means that parts of the array job have started to run but not all of it and that's when the status of an array job will change from queued to a capital B okay so these are other options now we've got a multiple node job here or a single node job here if for some reason you need to know um, which actual compute nodes your job is actually running on you can find that out by giving another option to the qstat command so we're using the qstat minus u username and then the minus aw you can give it a minus one so the number one and little n as an option and then we can now see that we are have been given an extra output here and i'm just gonna redo that and take the minus w out and now it's a bit easier to see um, so the first job is running on a single node and it's been given 12 cores on that single node the other job is running over two different compute nodes with 24 cores on each of these compute nodes and so if you ever need to do some debugging or checking 
um, on a particular job and which node it's been running on, then this is a way of finding out which no compute nodes were used. I'm going to go through one last option for the qstat command and that is if you want to have information about a running job and that is information about the resource usage for example so this job is asked for 12 cores and 50 gigabytes of memory and now I want to actually see if it is using all of that or not and so I can do a qstat minus little f which gives a full output of all the information of a job if I type it in like this I will see that information for every single job that is in the queue however I just want to have a look at this particular one here I'm going to take this one with the full name and if I now press enter it will come up with a lot, quite a bit of output and information. Um, these are just path and other things that have been said. And But the most important one that we're interested in is the top. And that is the block about resources used. So if we now look at the job I've been it's asked for 12 cores and so CPU percent used should be approximately or very close to 100 times 12 so 1200 and we can see that this is actually the case which means that this job is actually using all those 12 cores that it has asked for to use so now in some jobs you might find that this is only 400 or 800 and then you might actually consider um, when you submit the next job to adjust the number of cores that the job might need. The next one we're going to check at is the 50 gigabytes of memory that have been requested. So we look at the memory used. This is in kilobytes. So taking this off will give us megabytes and then another three off this is now the gigabytes here and so this shows that um, this job is indeed using the full 50 gigabytes that have been requested so again if you find that a job is consistently using less than the actual amount that has been requested then you might want to consider readjusting your requests for the next jobs you are submitting. Okay, so these are possibly the most useful and com or most common flags for the qstat command. So qstat gives the status of the queue and the jobs in a queue, adding minus u and then the username will only print out jobs for a particular user. Adding a minus a gives um, an all output, so more columns output and more a nicer output of jobs. Adding a, a w to that will give a wider output that's often slightly more readable. Adding a minus capital T. Um, gives an estimated start time for queue jobs. Adding a minus little t will print out information about all the tasks in an array job. And if you use a minus little f, you will get a full output. And if you then give it a job ID at the end, it will print the full output of that particular job. So qstat is the command to monitor your jobs if your HPC system is using the PBS system.